period. We're great. Here's a video. How are you doing, Barry? How are you? I'm very good. Very good, thank you. Barry, thanks for coming on with us. Um, Barry, I suppose you're, you're, you're oh, Connor, Connor Products, Connor the Engineering, the whole lot there above in, above in County Clare. Um, I suppose, Barry, for people that might know you or might know what Connor is, can you tell us a small bit about maybe the history of the company and of what you do and so on? Yeah, I can. Um, so Connor Engineering, um, we're based here in Tubber, North Clare. We're only a mile or less than a mile from the, the Galway border. Um, and the company was set up in um, 1985 by my father, Indo O'Connor, and my mother as well. Um, so back in the, the late 80s, um, they were doing bits of everything. I think they were doing um, ring feeders, they were doing transport boxes. Um, then they started into share grabs, um, starting sugar grabs in a big way, and uh, toppers, grass toppers then, um, and day wrappers. So they, they were kind of their main products in the late 80s, early 90s, throughout the 90s. Um, uh, they developed the first uh, direct drive grass topper. So prior to that, grass toppers would have been mainly belt driven. Mm -hmm. um, but the, they did the, the direct drive, so there was no belts. It was direct from the PTO shaft to the gearbox and, and straight shaft and connect to other gearboxes. So that was a kind of a, a new thing back in the early 90s and that was a huge success. They sold thousands upon thousands of toppers back, back then. And we we um, we don't do toppers anymore, but we did them for maybe 20, 25 years. And they were, they were um, kind of what Connor Engineering started out on, or what they built their name on. There would have been there would have been thousands of them sold throughout Ireland. And then the bale wrapper, um, as the round bale kind of came, became popular in the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, Connor and McHale and Tanko mm -hmm. were kind of all started out with the the, the bale wrapper at the same time. Um, so the Connor, the Connor one was, was very successful, it got a good name for being very strongly built and that became very very popular in the, in the 90s and the 2000s. It, um, when the fusion came in then in the, around the year 2000, um, uh, that kind of has, the, the bear wrapper, the single bear wrapper is not as common anymore obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and the satellite wrappers as well are, are becoming more popular so it's not, it's not a huge um, product for us anymore, yeah. um, but we still we still make it. It's, it's, it's a very good name and is, um, yeah. for heavy duty use and um, for heavier bales that a lot of people wouldn't wouldn't use anything else. But yeah. then in the early in the t late nineties, we started into vacuum tanks, side spreaders, um, and then in the around 2007, 2008, we started with diet feeders. So we've kind of developed into those products. Our focus on those products a lot more now, and vacuum tanks is now by far and away our most our most uh, popular product. Um, we sell a lot of those, um, and it's it's kind of taken over a good bit now because of the the focus on the environmental stuff with um, the Thames scheme and that, and with grants yeah. available now, and um, there's a huge demand for vacuum tanks and for counter tanks in particular. Yeah. Do you know, like, you're, 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 first of all, there you were talking about um, bale wrappers. I, I had the pleasure of, of visiting your factory going back, I think, around 97 or 98. A friend of mine, and this is just a, a friend of mine, bought um, a bale wrapper off of me. And do you know, to be honest, this fella, like, this fella now would be rough. Yeah, he, won't, he won't be listening to this, so we're okay. This fella now, he, folks, like, this fella now would be as rough <laughs> as I can mention on the radio, like. But he bought a Connor bale wrapper, and everything else fell apart. He had he had a baler, he had everything everything else fell apart, but the Connor bale wrapper stayed. It stayed there, and do you know what? I'd say he probably still has it to this day, and it, nothing nothing ever happened. It it just. It, it, it was it, it, it's a true testament to what you do above there you know you'd often see companies that might buy back something to put into the showroom this is one of the yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's the problem with the belt that lasted too long yeah it, it lasted too long it was too good yeah 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 
But the other side of the thing, you were talking about the tanks. And I know, okay, I, I'm, a, I'm a tractor guy. I'm tractor machinery, diggers, store med, all that kind of stuff. But, and I know it's hard to get people to be probably listening now and they're thinking, how is this for I getting excited about a tank? But I, I was going up the road the other day and you'll have to excuse my language folks, but I, I cut up behind this slurry tank with a trail and shoe on the back of it. A big black tank with Connor written across the back of it and I'm sorry to say it, but it was a sexy looking machine. Do you know? <laughs> like, it's kind of, you know, there's probably people laughing now, like, and they're eating their breakfast. But like, I cut up behind this lovely painted black tank and it was, it was a fabulous looking machine. Like, do you know, it, it was one of the nicest looking slurry tanks. If you can get excited about slurry tanks, you're going to get excited about this tank. Like, but you know, from what I can understand, you, you build the tanks then to kind of suit the farmer or suit the contractor. You know, you don't have any kind of in stock. You kind of build them to requirements. Yeah, well, it's, it's gone a bit, it's gone a bit mad in that sense nowadays because there's so many different options and, and stuff and mm -hmm. sizes and extras um, that we, we have to give no choice. Like we, back in, back in 2008, 2009, I can remember having two and a half thousand gallon tanks in, in stock in the yard, mm -hmm. just built, waiting to go out, but it's totally, it's totally changed from that. Yeah. Like you get, um, the tanks are bigger and there's, there's more options with them. People want more different things like you, People don't spread slurry with splash test that much anymore, so you need trade and shoe, driven bar. Yeah. I, I, did, I did that, I need brackets for it. People want rain guns, auto fills. You have different wheel options. You can go, like now on a two and a half thousand gallon tank, you, it just used to be, there was no question about the wheels. They were just uh, the 865 or 32 wheels, but now you have different different brands. And we want Trelleborg, we've got 900s. You go as big as 1050 wheels. And then when you went to Tandem Axle, you have you could have 30 different wheel options for for say a three and a half thousand gallon tank. Mm -hmm. And we you you're going into triaxle tanks that are used for haul and digestate and stuff with overhead booms and power fills, auto fills. Mm -hmm. You can go with 16,000 liter air cooled, water cooled pumps. You can you can go like you some tanks could be costing 60, 70 thousand. You're gone into a totally different ball game to where yes. it was 10, yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah. And we, 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 we've done really well with the tandem and the, and the, the triaxle tanks. They've, they've um, kind of really grown, especially in the UK, because a lot of the AD plants, you know, they, they draw the, the waste away from them and draw the, the, the stuff to them. So there's, um, there's a lot of that in the UK, and we, we sold a good few tanks for that. And a lot of our sales come from word of mouth. So, like for example, there's one big contractor out there. He could have ten or twelve or triaxle tanks, and I'd say I don't know. We could have got ten other sales just from people who have who've seen that guy and stuff. So it, it um, the, the the bigger tanks are are have become quite popular with us as well, which you know this makes it a lot more complicated and stuff. But like that tank you saw, like the, even the paint finish paint and black now is becoming quite pop and pop common because people just like the they want this the machinery to look look cool as you yeah, say and yeah. they want they want it to look the parts and paint and black and and different lights and just all these type of things that people are just a lot more particular about nowadays yeah yeah for definite absolutely no it was just a fantastic looking piece of kit and another tank i saw the other night in on the internet it was um your own tank again it was i think you you, you made it for country crest um, you know, it, it was just, there was no pump in it, so you would have to, was it just a kind of a water bowl or, or uh, did I see Country Crest was carved out with, with a CNC machine on, on the back of it, you know, it was another fantastic looking piece of kit like. Yeah, yeah, the, um, the finish, the, the people are big into the finish now and getting the different names and stuff on yeah. it, yeah, but um, yeah, they can get, they can get very particular about the finish and, and that's a big thing now and kind of have a good name for, for finishing off the machines well yeah. and the the paint work and stuff it has to be right for guys nowadays because they just they just don't they just don't um accept anything less. Yeah. And of course Barry everything everything you do is made above there. Everything is made in house we call it. Everything is made in, in, in Tober here, yeah, in the factory everything is made yeah. from, from scratch, yeah. 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 Of course it's it's not just tanks you do, you also do the a range of diet feeders and a range of muck spreaders and everything. Yeah, yeah, diet feeders would be 
will be a big enough for one for us now and um a little bit more so in export than in than in Ireland. We we very good dealer in France who, who buys a good few of them. Mm-hmm. We sent a few to New Zealand and the UK and stuff as well. The the dye feeder market is quite competitive because there's so many there's so many different manufacturers of dye feeders. But um, again, we have built up a good name in, in some areas, uh, mm. especially in France. I say, and they they can get quite complicated in, in France because the the vast majority with our front conveyors and there'll be bigger models there'll be 20 24 26 cubic meter so it'll be tandem axles so yeah um there's a lot there's a lot of work in, in the diet feeders but um a good product for us as well i'm gonna say someone there i know was thinking about a diet feeder there for i suppose the fall of the year october november when the cattle will be going in um and to order a diet feeder or something off yourselves what kind of time frame would you be talking um, we'd often, would usually try to keep, um, say, a standard enough machine like a 12 or a, a 20 cubic meter in stock, just mm-hmm. a standard one with no, with no extras. But um, at the moment, we don't have anything in stock because we're, we're so busy with, with trying to keep up to orders. But yeah. normally, you'd be waiting about four months, roughly, yeah. for, for uh, say, if you had to get one built from scratch. So anyone saw that might be thinking about ordering one, they'd want to be kind of, they'd want to be really thinking about it now this time of the year. They definitely would, yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's brilliant. That's brilliant, Barry. And we say, what the what's the plans for the future? What's what's the I suppose what's this time next year for 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 Connor Engineering? Well, we're um we hadn't we haven't done too much on new products recently because we're kind of developing um new stuff in the existing range. Like we've we've new stuff in in the vacuum tanks. Like we we um gone to bigger tanks and we've, we've changed overhead booms and mm-hmm. design and we're we're looking at wider dribble bars and trading shoes yeah. so at the moment we, we we do a seven meter um would be very very popular common size but with a lot of requests for, for wider ones so we're looking at doing um, a 10 meter and trading shoe and dribble bar that will be coming out to, uh, in a couple of months hopefully Brilliant. and within the diet feeders we, we, we a new uh, design conveyor coming out that um uh, can raise both sides so you can shift left to right and raise it automatically for feeding into the troughs and we're developing a, a straw blower for the, the diet feeders but that's more for for export uh, markets wouldn't be that popular in ireland yeah, yeah. with the um the huge demand at the moment which with uh for for sorry tanks because of this grant and also with the delays with COVID. Um, because we've we had last year we had to um, go on split shifts because of COVID and we had um, with a, a lot of staff out that were um, you know they had to self isolate if they were, came in yes. close contact and we didn't have any cases luckily but yes. there was a lot of people out because of close contacts and this and that there was and there's a huge there's huge problems with supply at the moment it's causing a lot of delays you know trying to get in yeah. get in products and, and stuff uh, raw materials so we are. Just basically have to catch up at the moment regards orders and stuff. So um, that's that's kind of put slow down a lot of a lot of the new things that we were developing. But um, things are kind of straightening out a little bit now. Yeah. So hopefully we'll, we'll get to catch up soon enough. Yeah, yeah, we will get back. Of course, like you were saying there, the supply and all that. Of course, the price of steel and all that has actually gone has gone through the roof. Like it has. Yeah, yeah. We're we're paying a thousand euro a ton now for steel versus say last summer it probably would have been five or six hundred euro a ton so that's nearly a hundred percent increase and yeah. um it's the same with with tires axles everything there the last nine months we probably had two or three different price increases just as a just a massive demand the whole world at the moment for for your, your general raw materials like rubber and steel and that and um because of the whole thing was messed up last year with covid yeah. um yeah the, the supply is too low and the demand is, is very, very high, so prices are going, going a bit mental at the moment, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it, it's it's kind of the end user that's going to have to... Exactly, yeah, yeah. ...have to suck it up. Come here, Barry, that's kind of it. I can't think of any more to ask you unless you have anything else you think you might want to add. Um, not really, no. No, we've, uh, we've ran through uh, the main things there. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. I think that's it, yeah. That's it, sure. Look, uh, Anyone that's out there, if you want to give give a look at you, you, you have um, there's a little bit of stuff on YouTube and you have a Facebook page and everything. Yeah, yeah, the social media is, is big now, so we try to put um, up anything interesting on, on Facebook or, or Instagram, and most of our general stuff is on the 
is on the is on the website. Um, yeah. But there's there's a fairly good dealer network around around Ireland, and a lot of them have been selling for a long time. So they're they're very well tuned into answering any technical questions around. But yeah, yeah, yeah. if anyone has any queries around it, make sure and contact us. Yeah. Email, Facebook, phone, whatever way, whatever way suits them. Perfect. Barry, come here. Thank you very much for your time and your help. And um, all right. we wish you all the, the very best in the future and keep up the good work above there. No problem. Thanks a million Thanks for the call. Barry. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks. Bye. Period. Well, great. Here's a video.